They said you couldn't grow artichokes in the hot, humid south. Today, we're going to show you what we've been doing over the past four years to grow beautiful artichoke like these. Stay tuned. When we first moved here, I wanted to grow some artichokes, but everything that I read said you can't grow artichokes in southern Alabama in zone eight uh, along the Gulf Coast. It's just too hot and too humid here. But I read one article that said you can, and this is what you have to do. You've got to give them plenty of shade right during the middle of the, heart, the uh, hottest part of the day. So I went to my big box store, store and I bought a box or a package of artichoke seed. Now these are green globe, and that was the only variety I could find at the big box store. So I started them in little cups. Uh, within a week they came up. I grew them out probably for a few weeks, and then I planted a cluster here, and then I planted a cluster over there where it got a little bit more sun. Those over there lasted for about two years, and eventually, uh, from all the hot and heat, they didn't last. But these have been here for four years, and they keep multiplying. And they've done so well that I've actually planted these purple varieties in the fall last year. So these plants are about six months old. Nice, beautiful foliage, they look good. And uh, Michelle and I had talked about that these plants look so good, you could actually integrate these into your landscape if you don't want to grow fruit in your front yard. You can grow a nice, beautiful uh, thistle type plant like artichokes and mix that right in with your hedges and nobody in your HOA would ever know that you were growing an edible plant in your front yard until they bloom. And then even when they do bloom, eat this nice, beautiful uh, purple flower that just opens right up. It's this big milk thistle looking flower. The bees love it, gives off good uh, pollen and good nectar for the bees. And we've let these go to flower before because we didn't harvest them in time and they just get loaded up and the bees are just playing all through there and they get solid yellow with pollen. But um, last night we chopped one off and we had it for dinner and Michelle found a recipe and we're gonna show you that a little bit later in the video on how she prepared that. It was so good it made you roll your eyes whenever you're eating artichoke. And I told the people at work, I was like, we had artichoke last night and it was the most amazing artichoke I've ever had. And uh, most everybody there was like, I haven't ate artichoke and I can't remember when. But if you're growing them like this, you can have them whenever uh, spring rolls around. Now, if you look right here behind me, I got this pecan tree. This pecan tree starting at about 12 noon, one o'clock-ish, starts casting a shadow. That's when the heat of the day starts to take these things out. And uh, they'll struggle through a hot summer down here but because we have the shade here, these things keep surviving, keep growing. And uh, that's one of the secrets to growing artichokes is keeping them out of that hot noonday sun when you're living in, in this climate. Um, now, I mentioned that I started these from seeds. There's another way that you can get artichokes. If you know someone around you that has artichoke plants, these divide off and send up side shoots like any other tuberous plant. So bring the camera in here a little bit closer and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to pull these leaves back and you can see that I've got numerous plants just from that one plant that I planted here four years ago. The mother plant that I had down here, um, I guess it has gone on, but all these side shoots keep coming off every year. Now, if you had a little side shoot like that, you just take your little shovel, go right down in there, sever that off, and then you have a whole new transplant that you can take and share out with your friends and your family. Or you can keep dividing them and uh, multiply out uh, a nice planting of these. Now, we've got three plants here. This one plant grouping that I have here has one, two, three from yesterday four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got at least ten artichokes that I can harvest off of this one clump of uh, artichoke plants. And it's right here against the fence. It's kind of out of the way. It's not in the main part of my garden. 
I don't really access this unless I'm back here and I'm tending maybe this bed over here. But it's kind of just tucked away in the back corner of the garden and gets a lot of shade. So it does very well here. All right, so uh, artichokes won't bear the first year. It has to go through a cooling period. So these I planted in November. I was hoping that maybe we could get a artichoke harvest this year since it went through a cool spell and then it warmed up. But I guess these plants just weren't big enough to, uh, to send up an artichoke bloom this year. But artichokes are uh, biennial. You have to grow them for a year and then it has to go through a cooling period and then the following year, then you'll get these blooms. I have went to the big box store and I see nice big plants like this in, in gallon size pots, nursery pots, and you could bring those home. Those have been in that pot long enough that whenever you plant those out in the spring, you may get a harvest off of them that same year. You may not, it may have to go through an additional cooling period. So whenever you're planting artichokes, don't think that you're gonna get artichokes the very first year that you plant this out unless you have a mature plant that has went through a cool season. You're gonna to have to have this plant for at least two years. Um, as long as we don't face an excessive heat or a drought and I lose these for some reason, these uh, should continue to grow year after year after year. And I have all these uh, artichokes on irrigation also, and I have a on timer. So we start getting into a dry period, I could just turn the timer on and every day it'll, it'll water and uh, help pull them through a uh, hot summer. Now, in the early springtime, before it starts pushing all this new growth, you want to give them a healthy dose of fertilizer. They're very rich or very heavy nitrogen feeders, but I feed them an organic fertilizer. I use my Espoma, big bag of Hollytone, and I take a handful of that, and I just go around the outside under the leaf area, and I just kind of mix that into the surface of the soil and uh, if you're if you're doing things a little left by, uh, a little late and you're a lot kind of behind in the season you could even give them a dose of uh, nitrogen rich miracle grow or some type of uh, liquid fertilizer like that to kind of just give them up and get them boost but i prefer to do the organic organic tends to taste better it tends to give you a healthier plant it tends to give you healthier soil that's the ideal way to go all right since i've shared with you our artichoke that we have growing here let's go ahead and harvest one take it inside and we're going to show you how we're going to prepare it and then we'll do a taste test for you Everybody, it's Michelle and I'm in the kitchen so we've got an artichoke from our garden and I'm going to show you the simple recipe to steam your artichoke you don't want to boil it and I know everybody says boil it but it boils all the nutrients and the the good stuff right out of it so we're gonna steam it so first off you wash your artichoke I move the leaves open it up make sure there's no bugs in there no bugs in our artichokes. What are you talking about? Give it a good little shake. <laughs> Alright, we're going to move over here and I'm going to cut the artichoke and we're just going to do it in a half. So I'm going to find the spot that's... Before I do that, I'm going to take off these little leaves that are right here in the bottom. These little, little leaves because you're not going to eat that anyway. Take that little one off right there and take this one off. Just sort of shave it off. All right, so I find a good happy medium spot that I know I can cut straight down. And then I take and I split the artichoke all the way down through the stem. That way you get half and I get half. That's right. Now. If you don't finish, I'll leave your help. All right, see how pretty that looks on the inside? It's starting to develop the purple blossom. Now, a lot of people say that you can cut this part away 
but we ate it last night and it was great so I'm just going to split it just like it is because there's a lot of little nutrients and stuff in the bottom of these stems that we actually bite yeah. off. Now the part, the purple part you're seeing here, this is the choke and they generally want you to remove the choke especially if it's been filled out because that would be kind of stringy in there and mm -hmm. it might not be desirable. Like she just said, last night we had one mm -hmm. and it was completely edible. And right, it, it was good. Yeah, it was real good. All, All right. right. So I'm going over here. The water has already started to steam. Take the lid off. Turn the fan on in a minute. And you just place the artichokes in there. And a double boiler Ouch. steamer. Be careful not to burn yourself. And I have a, a bag of sea salt. So now this is C90 minerals. And then Michelle put it into a grinder and ground it into a fine flour. Yeah, so we're getting a, some yummy goodness here. I just sprinkle the artichoke with, with the sea salt. Get it up in the leaves of it. Not too much. And then I take some black pepper. Sprinkle it. Sprinkle it. And some thyme. Sprinkle it with a little bit of thyme. And then we also have this garlic spread. So it's awesome. I put a little bit on there. It has a lot of garlic and other. Um, I could really taste the garlic. It's really good. And then you can also melt it and use it as a dip yeah. after the artichoke. So it serves a, a dual purpose. But it's really soft. I don't know if you can see it's definitely like a spread. So let me get a spoon for that. So take a little bit, put it on the top. A little bit oh, on the bottom. You have to be careful not to burn yourself. It's good to start this before it starts steaming. But we already started steaming it. Cause her good sous chef husband started the <laughs> water before we started the video. That's okay. All right, so I just put two little spots of uh, garlic butter on there, and, and when it melts, it's going to go everywhere, and then you can heat up the rest for dipping. So, All right, for how long do we steam it now? So um, it has to steam for about 30 minutes wow. in the steamer, so we can set the timer, and you also want to put the lid on it and leave the lid on it. And All right, time for the taste test. So we're gonna pull off one, and basically you're just gonna eat the fatty portion, the little white part that's right there on the end, <clears throat> bite down on it and then rake it out with your teeth. Mmm, that's really good. Then the rest of that you just throw away. And then right here in the center is the artichoke heart. So if the choke is not edible, because you waited too long for it to mature, then you can pull that choke out <clears throat> and you can get rid of that. But I'm gonna try that real quick. That's too little, a little, little too mature. So we'll throw that out. It has really good flavor throw though. <clears throat> so we'll pull that artichoke heart out. All the way down the stem is edible so you want to make sure when you cut your artichoke that you get plenty of stem down there so you have all that edible artichoke heart that's wonderful that is absolutely <clears throat> the best tasting way i've ever eaten an artichoke I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, follow us along on our future adventures. And don't forget, keep growing, keep building, and always keep adventuring. And together, we're Flumberton Famous.